on live. So, hey everybody. Hey, thank you guys for joining us here on um, my little or yeah, thing that I will here. And um, I started this for, um, for come on, you want to come in, Pastor? You don't want to come in. I want to make sure all your people made it. Yes, we on. Everybody on? Everybody's on. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, but I started it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I started about dating um, because we right here at spring season and in the few, um, in a few weeks, this whole Corona thing is going to be all over with, and uh, the dating scene is going to lit up. And so, bring people on, on to really talk about dating the right way especially dating god's way to date or what you're dating and being so tonight was next week i had her, her husband talk here um we're gonna uh, talk about dating the right way is, is one that um um uh her she, she dated and so I, I just want to talk here and, and her background and um and her advice on Let me Hi, delay. My, yeah, my tech husband's in the background trying to see if he can enable a connection for me. But I'm happy to be here. I think you were just asking for me to share a little bit about my background. My connection doesn't seem good, good on my side. My internet. That doesn't seem good again. Okay. Yeah, so past you're a little broken. He <laughs> said that my internet seems a little choppy on my end. Yeah. Um, I'll move you a little bit. This is Chrome. Chrome uses a lot of CPU. And like right now, it says I have like four processes open. So let me close a few processes down and try to save me some memory here or some processing speed. And hopefully um, this will help me out a little bit. If not, then I'm gonna have to cut this stream. Okay, no problem. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> going anywhere? Okay. Some processes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I see now where my video is choppy. And I made the computer. And we're gonna resume this okay. uh in a minute. Okay, sounds good.
Hey. Hi. That's oh, good. better. <laughs> uh, hey, it's amazing what a reboot can do. <laughs> Bless the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So again, um, for recording purposes, I'll start all over. So, um, so Nakia, I started this just a little chat about dating, and because the spring season is here, going into the summer season, so it's going to be a hot dating time for those that are unmarried. And so, I just wanted to share some tips with those about dating God's way, doing it the right way, um, as God sees fit. So, um. I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, Mrs. Grace, and um, and then we can get rolling. Wonderful. Hi, everybody. I am the better half to know. <laughs> I'm the wife of uh, Tarek that was on last week, and I am a mom of a three and a half year old. I can't believe it. I am a minister with InterVarsity Christian Fellowship, which is a national nonprofit ministry to college students. And I've been doing that for almost 20 years now. I can't believe it. Wow. And um, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Ooh, ooh, any Baltimore fans, Raven fans. <laughs> um, purple and black. And <laughs> And I now live here in the Waldorf, Maryland area, attend the church in the Bowie, attend the servant leadership of the church in the Bowie, Maryland area, and um, continue in uh, campus ministry and the ministry of mom and wife. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I shot you the scripture. Uh, Proverbs 18 and 22, mm -hmm. where it talks about, you know, um, the scripture simply says, you know, a man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor for the, for the Lord. Right. And so one of the things I typically uh, or sometimes one of my common things I say is um, I tell a young lady um, is to, you know, sometimes you just got to put your place Put yourself in a place to be found because mm -hmm. it says a man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Do you have any um, or do you have any suggestions or do you agree that um, when a young lady is ready for courting into marriage that um, that they should put themselves in a place to be found or or should the hunter just go out hunting? I'm of the mindset that the hunter should hunt. Um, but it's okay for you to, you know, put yourself out there to be found. But the way to put yourself out to the, there to be found is, in my opinion, different than what most people would think. You know, like, oh, let me get myself looking all glamorous and all that, which is good. It's, it's good to look. You know, I had to do some a little bit of eye stuff if we got on here. It's good to look good, right? <laughs> but more importantly than that, how I wanted to be found was I wanted to be found people to whoever found me, my husband has found me, um, to find my heart, to find my heart for God, my love for God, to find me serving God in ministry, to find um, a partner who could serve with him in ministry um, and support him and support the vision that God gives him and his family. So for me, putting myself in a position to be found, which is a, a longer story, but I actually wasn't trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I ended up doing was pretty much just working on myself and being the best version of myself that I could be for God, not necessarily for marriage. And then he found me and um, and then we kind of just grew in a relationship progressed from there. So. Wow. 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 That's 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 really good. I, I didn't think about the um, the heart position of what you talked about, what you just said about um putting yourself, putting your heart in a place uh, to be found by God first and then by man, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what did that, what did that, what did that look like? Yeah. So for me, that looked like, well, a little bit more about my background. My mom, shout out to my mom. Not like she's up now watching, but shout out mama. Hey, Single mom raised four of us on her own in Baltimore city. And, um, she and my dad got divorced when I was three. So I really didn't know my father. He was kind of, I, I want to say in and out, but he really wasn't in my life at all. And so I I think I fell into a pattern that a lot of young women who have been you know, abandoned by their father or maybe never knew their father fell into where I was like, 
just look, I pretty much was just looking for love and acceptance and affirmation from men, you know, that now I know was me looking for some affirmation from God and from um, a father figure. Mm -hmm. But I ended up dating like a lot, a lot of guys um, and just not having a great, healthy dating background. So that was like my teenage years. So fast forward to when I get to college, I, um, even though I was raised in the church, I get to college and I kind of do that whole exploration thing my freshman year of like, church, God, who's that? And just, you know, just go. <laughs> and thankfully, by the grace of God, I had people that um, had an eye out for me. Um, InterVarsity, the organization I work for, they had staff at my school who just pursued me and mentored me and yeah. um, helped me to rediscover God for myself as an adult and not just, you know, my grandmother's faith or my mother's faith. And that and rediscovering God for myself as an adult, my senior year in college, was what spurred me on to um, wanting to be one of my heart to be in the right position for God. Because even before then, I went to church. I prayed a prayer of salvation when I was eight. Um, I had a relationship with God where it was like, if I needed him for something, Jesus, Jesus, hey, I need this, you know. <laughs> but he did not have my whole heart prior to that senior year. So what happened for me my senior year in college was I was in a two-year relationship, very unhealthy relationship with a guy who was atheist, didn't believe in God at all, didn't believe in mm -hmm. God, didn't organized religion. Don't ask me how I did it for two years. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> hey, and that's your story. All <laughs> right. The day before my senior year, um, I finally said, I'm just so tired of running. Like, I remember I just had this honest conversation with God, like, I'm just so tired. Like, I'm so tired of running from you, God. And I knew that the relationship with him wasn't right. But I kept praying that prayer, like, Lord, if it's not from you, take it away. Even though I knew I should have just left him alone. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I should have just left him alone. Yeah. But I was praying to pass a prayer. Just take him away, Lord. And then <laughs> finally, that day before my senior year was me letting go of him and that relationship and trying to take dating into my own hands and saying, God, I'm giving you my whole life, including relationships. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, so like, I mean, it was pretty much like a come to Jesus moment the day before my senior year, and we broke up, and then things started moving quickly in my life after that. Um, just getting involved in leading Bible studies, discovering God's purpose for me, um, just me by myself, <laughs> just being, <laughs> you know, just being me, His daughter, and. Um, I just felt like I just fell in love with him. And that's when um, that's when things started to come into motion for me to meet Tariq. Wow. But it still was a quite a journey of just me just loving myself and loving God and um, not even having dating anywhere on the list. <laughs> like <I was laughs> dating marriage, it wasn't even it wasn't even on the list because I was just trying to get my life right, trying yeah. to do the thing that God had called me to do. Yeah, I, I love the, the piece that you just um, you mentioned uh, a, a couple of uh, paragraphs back when you talked about uh, rediscovering God. Man, that's that's incredible, you know, um, especially coming from a church background and then coming to a place of social since we social distancing now, but coming to a place of social independence. Right. right? Right. Where your your social independence is not dependent on where your mommy take you, where your daddy take you, and where your siblings or whatever take you. Now you're socially independent. Where right. now you have to go for yourself. Yeah. And so, but that um, rediscovering God to rediscover who you are, I think that was um, and that 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 really spoke um, you know magnitudes. You know, I think really somebody really needed to hear. Um, that path of rediscovering, you know, of God and then finding themselves in that yeah. and then allowing um, your 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 future husband to discover the whole package. Yeah. You and God, you know, all, all in the one. Yeah. So that's awesome. So, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, many of the ladies that I that um, that we minister to, especially at the church and elsewhere, um, you know, uh, they have a, a, a lot of questions, you know, really about um, how to date. Yeah. Um, so as, as you were, um, as you found God and, and uh, you, re you rediscovered him, what were some of the um, things that, um, or some of your, what was your guidelines in dating and your, some of your, 
how you date it? Yeah. Well, <laughs> after I rediscovered God, what he told me was don't date. <laughs> and, and I think that, that was specifically for me because I had dated so much that God wanted to, he wanted, he wanted me, like, I don't want it to sound weird, but he wanted me to himself for me to just grow sure. in my relationship with him. And um, that would, that would have been pretty much a first in my whole life at that point of like, really just me focusing on my relationship with him. And up until that point, dating and men and trying to do things for men's attention, men's attention was like, it was like an idol in my life. It was before it was before God. So after that rediscovery, I pretty much took I knew that it was at least a year that um, that I was going to take to just not date. And this is from like this. At this point, I'm 21. But I have been dating since I was like 14, like okay. continually. <laughs> no gap. You know, someone <laughs> so I knew it was at least a year that God was like, I want you to just take this year and just focus on me. Yeah. But who, 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 who comes into the picture? <laughs> right after <laughs> that happens, it's hard. <laughs> It's hard. Um, not too, not too long after that happens, he comes, he comes into the picture, of course. Wow. But great time to talk. I wasn't, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't dating at all. Um, so I guess the only guidelines that I had for when I, after I rediscovered God was like me asking him, is now the time? Because what he said to me was no. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, until it was, you know, but I didn't, I think not assuming that you should be dating is one, you know, that that's something that you and God need to be talking about as far as like your readiness. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also, yeah, this might just be a season that he just wants to just pour into you and invest into you and um, reveal his purpose to you outside of a relationship, a dating relationship. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I would say definitely the friendship piece, like developing friendship with, men um, with my brothers was a big piece because I had, I pretty much had objectified them my whole life was like, mm -hmm. what can I get from you versus like, you're a person. <laughs> and I, I know it sounds really strange, but I feel like we, we do this to each other all the time. It's like, what can I get from you? Even to the point of like, are you my spouse? All of a sudden it's like, you're an object for something that I want versus like, you are a child of God. You are a son of God. You are my brother in Christ, you know? So I had like a lot of rebuilding to do in that sense of like, okay, first you need to get it straight of like, uh -oh. this is your brother before anything else and like learn how to build healthy relationships with men. But that was personally my journey, you know, yeah. I think a lot because of things with my dad, like I had to learn how to build relationships with older men, with peers. I was pretty good with younger guys because I have two younger brothers, you know, but I just had to learn how to build healthy relationships with men, period, before I could yeah. think about building romance on top of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was just talking to a, a young lady today about some of the same things about um, how she viewed her because of her experience with men, with her, you know, pretty much her father um, has kind of helped um, um, kind of help form her vision about who man is and what a man is and the purpose of the man of a man in her life. And, um, and so, yeah, and we, and we discussed that today. So I'm happy you really, you really touched on that and, um, and, uh, really helped clear things up. Y'all, y'all come on in here. Y'all ask some questions. Y'all type, type some questions in here. Um, as we have Nakia on the line, we kind of got started late and I only gave myself really, I only give myself an hour in the kid. Uh, to to do these to to do these streams and everything, um, so I try to be out by nine. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so but I think just um, are there any um, other tips that um, you can tell the ladies um, about um, um, being in a place or you know from the from the period from dating to courting to marriage. Um, Mm -hmm. What's their, what should be their posture if they um, desire to be married? Yeah, posture. I would say um, having a posture of desiring God before desiring marriage, <laughs> yeah. so that you know that God, so that you know that the pursuit of marriage is not an idol. 
um, or wanting to be loved and all those things. Relationship is not an idol, but you sincerely, you want God more than anything else. And you also want to marry somebody who wants God more than anything else. Right. Um, so that's the, that's, that's the basis I think is like, you don't need to be married to be complete and whole. You know, you don't need to be married. It's a beautiful thing, but you don't need to be married. <laughs> um, and the purpose that God has for you, you can still fulfill the purpose God has for you being single. Yeah. So, so th- those yeah. are kind of, you know, basic foundational things. And I think if you can approach marriage and relationship from a healthy point of view of knowing those things, of like, God is my source. God is my everything. I'm not looking for marriage to fulfill me, to make me happy, to make me whole, to give me purpose. That's God. God does all of that. You know, God yeah. Happy. God is your fulfillment. God makes you whole. God gives you purpose. So put in marriage in its rightful place before you approach, um, before you approach dating. And then some of the best advice I got was um, from one of my mentors who said, you know, pretty much he was like, just run after God as hard as you can. Look to your left and look to your right and see who's there. You yeah. know, so don't go like looking for men. <laughs> or right. look for houses, but look for God. Go after God and then see who is there you know, running that same race, who is there running after God as hard as you are, who's there supporting you as you pursue God, who is there, um, you know, growing and learning with you as you sit under, you know, leadership at your church or doing ministry or outreach. Um, you you do what you need to do to pursue God and then just see who's around, you know. <laughs> before we get to the question, I have one more, um, and, and one more question before we get to the list of questions here. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, because we are in this uh, season of quarantine, um, that we that we are right on the tail end of, I believe we're on the tail end of this thing. But since we are in this season of quarantine, a lot of men and women they finding themselves um, in a place of um, not having a companion right now. You know, they in the house, they by themselves. Um, can you give them encouragement um, in in this time of uh, isolation. Mm-hmm. Be encouraged. The grass isn't greener on the other side. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Be encouraged. Enjoy, enjoy the season of life that you're in. You know, and that's for whether you're single, married, married with kids. Um, yeah. Enjoy the season of life that you're in. Be continually asking yourself, God, you know, what is it that you're doing in me in this season, or what is it that you're inviting me into in this season? Um, and yeah, just continue to um, stay focused on God and the assignment that he has for you. Um, one thing, and that was good for me. That's good. I think whether you're quarantined or not, is just, you know, being wholehearted in your pursuit of God. I think Tariq had shared last week that when we first met, I was, I was going on a missions trip. And so I, I wouldn't worry about him. <laughs> like, I wouldn't worry about him. <laughs> I was not telling you guys, I was not looking for marriage, marriage, you know, because because my parents were divorced. So it was like, I honestly didn't think I could have a good marriage. Like, that's a whole nother thing. So I wasn't looking for it. So I wasn't looking for marriage. But um, but I knew that there were things that God had put before me to do. And I was just going to go, you know, and do that. And that was what he said was one of the things that attracted him to me was that I was actually serious about God. You know, that I actually, you know, yeah. loved God and was serious about other people knowing him and things like that. So I think wow. that's that from the original question. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So somebody asked, um, so what was it about your husband now that made you want to move to a courting space and not just be friends? Mm-hmm. That's a great question. Um yeah, there were a couple of things. There were a couple of things. And the natural, we had such a good friendship. I remember waking up one day and being like, I don't think I want to do my life without him. Like, I, again, because I wasn't trying to get married. So I wasn't like, oh, does he fit the list of like my, you know, most awesome, amazing spouse? I, did, I didn't have that. I know that's not everybody's story. That's just awesome. I didn't have that. It was just like, I literally was just like, I don't want to do my life without him. Maybe we should get married, you know? Um, It was just like, I wanted our friendship to last forever. I didn't want to do ministry without him. I didn't want to do life without him. It was like, all of a sudden, I just woke up and was like, I just want to be with him. 
Yeah. I just, I just know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we worked on friendships according. So that was sort of like in the natural. But in the spirit, I, I also had dreams. Like one of the ways that God speaks to me is through dreams. And so I had had a couple of dreams about us mm-hmm. that, you know, and like, I got like a little prophetic word, inkling of God in my ear. <laughs> He's the one. And um, I just hit it in my heart and prayed around it. <laughs> Until it came into, you know, until it came into fruition. But yeah, those, those were probably the biggest things. Me feeling like I was like, this is yours. This is your husband. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, God. Yeah. And then me also just come to the realization that like, I just loved him so much. I loved his heart. I loved being with him so much that I didn't want to. I just wanted to be with him forever. Wow. Wow. Now, Todd told me last week that um he did rely on his pastors to, um, help prepare him for marriage. Mm-hmm. Did you rely on any uh, spiritual help or anything like that to help prepare you? I did. I needed a lot of help too. Y'all can see. <laughs> I needed a lot of help too. Um, yeah. So for people that were on last week, um, Tarek shared about how we started dating and then we broke up and we worked on our friendship for a few years and then we started dating again. Well, during that time period that we were um, working on our friendship, I worked on a lot of other things like healing in regards to things with my dad. Like I found my dad, reconnected with my dad, mended that relationship. Um, I started developing other friendships with men that were just that were just friends for the first time in my life. Um, mm-hmm. I had mentors that were working with me, you know, like my university staff, my pastor that were working with me during that season. And how's that? You could say that was getting me ready for marriage, but I didn't take it as that. I took it as me just trying to get myself right. <laughs> but it did help prepare me for marriage to work on some of those things and to receive healing in the ways that I really um, needed it. And then when I actually was trying to get prepared for marriage, um, while we were dating, before we got engaged, we had a pre-engagement counseling session. So this is a like, are you sure you want to get engaged session? <laughs> right? And not a lot of people do that. Usually people do counseling after they get engaged. But it was yeah. so wonderful because as pastors did a session with us that was like, this is what it means to be married. This is what it means to be a wife. This is what it means to be a husband. Are, 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 you, are you sure? <laughs> before the ring comes on a finger, before yeah. the- into the ring and the ring is going to and all that. Are you sure you, you know? And that was like, I into this idea. Ooh, that was so helpful because yeah. I left that thing like, do I? <laughs> you know, I think, I think about uh, because you know, when you're just so in love, you're not seeing the full picture. You need somebody with some wisdom, <laughs> some years out to be like, yeah. this, is what this is really going to mean for the long haul. And um, yeah. do you understand what you will be stepping into? So, um, our pastors are really helpful for that, too. Yeah. I, I think me and Pastor E, uh, first first uh heated moment of fellowship uh-huh. <laughs> was um was was that pre-marital pre premarital counseling yes. and um, yes. Yes. they asked us to draw a picture of a, a studio of a house or something whatever and I drew out this big um lavish recording studio and her studio was a TV and the stereo system <laughs> and um <laughs> <laughs> so we had we had two separate ideas of what um of, of what a studio was. We had it just showed it just showed us we had two separate ideas of even what a family was and what a family yeah. is. <laughs> he said your favorite room, <laughs> yes, you know, but it, it but it it just goes to show you know um even as things that we should discover as friends. So what? What are some of the other things you think we should discover um, just as being friends before we even get to court? And what what are some of the key discovery points that, you know, that we should learn about each other? Mm-hmm. Um, some things that were really important to me was like his his character. So. Um, and these are things that you can tend to see more over time, although you can, some people can't pick up on these things quickly. So for, for us, it was something I was able to see over time, but that's not necessarily the case. You know, some people do see that in somebody quickly and get married quickly, but his character, um, which we could see over time and then seeing how he responded in different environments. So mm-hmm. seeing him with my my family, seeing him with his family, seeing me, seeing him at his church, 
seeing him come to my church, <laughs> um, just seeing him in different environments, seeing him with my work um, community, which my my organization, we like a community. We call each other family and stuff. And everybody, y'all, like y'all a whole family over there. Yeah, we need the family. Then we like a family within a family. And it's just, <laughs> yeah. so, so he had to come check them out because they do mm-hmm. their own little strange tribe within a varsity. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I got to know people from his job. So just like getting to know him in different contexts to see his consistency. Like he was so consistent no matter what the context. So one example of that is that I would visit his church. He would be serving. But, you know, I'm thinking, well, he's in leadership. He should be serving. You know, he's putting down the chairs. He's picking up the chairs. He's doing the sound. He's doing. Mm-hmm. So the first couple of times, so I'm like, is he trying to impress me doing all this running around, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But then he kept doing it. Like every time, like we would go to my mom's house and he would be like, can I get you something? You know, can I run this? Or can I, any different environment, see how he treat his mama, right? See how he treat my mama. Then he would come to my church. My church. And it was like a revival service or something. He came early. I think it was the first time he came to my church. He's setting up chairs. He, <laughs> he vacuuming. I was like, what? <laughs> And again, a part of me was like, I was trying to press, but I knew like over time because how consistent he was, I was like, this is just his heart. And like, it legit is just his heart. Like, <laughs> Pastor William yeah. can tell you, you probably show up at their church and try to set up their cell. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's just great. That's, that's just him. That's yes, what he is. A servant heart. So, like, certain things like that, I didn't know I was looking for that, but the consistency mm-hmm. across the board in different settings really helped. Um, his character, how he related to people, his work ethic, how he spent his money, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> spent his yeah. money. Um, how he treated me as far as just like respect, um, his love for God, you know, how serious was his walk with God? Was it legit or was it just something he said that he did, but he didn't really live out? He could True. he pray? You know, could, could he pray? I got a headache. Oh, you do? Mm, too bad. Go take the towel on. No, 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 no. It was like, <laughs> I remember the first time I heard him pray, because he's very funny. And so you wouldn't know his spiritual depth with, in like a five minute conversation, right? Right, right, right. I, pray. I was like, I feel like the floor just shook in him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I received. Yes, you know. But he, he was a prayer word. But how they pray? Oh, okay. I could go on and on, because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's my dude. That's that crazy. That's my dude. <laughs> yeah. So, do we have any other questions out there? That's live before we end this stream tonight. I would like to thank Nakia just for coming on and joining us this evening for this discussion. I really enjoyed it. It won't be the last time uh, you hear of her. Pastor East asks, "How serious was his walk with God? Could he pray?" Oh, no. no that was her. Um, that was her comment. How service was he walk with God and could he pray? Yeah. And I, I think that's really important to um, as a Christian, you know, whether you, you know, you're dating a young lady or you you're dating uh, uh, or the young lady dating a guy is that, you, you know, are you uh, spiritually in tune? Are you are you spiritually in tune? Not just spiritually in tune, spiritually in tune with God, mm-hmm. you know, and, and can you pray? Do you know how to pray? And um and then if not if 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 not um can I help you with your prayer you know right. but you know I, I'm I'm kind of against the I, I don't agree with the um um with the with the dating Bible study yeah I've, I've yeah. just known too many too many things that gone left with mm-hmm. <laughs> with the opposite sex Bible study you know one on ones you know just. They ain't studying the Bible no more after a few sessions, you know. So, um, spiritual version of Netflix and chill, you know, like (laughs) Bible study one on one, really. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, yeah, yeah, I would add to look for that I really love about Target, and I think it's just good. No, what either way, female looking for a husband, either way, is um, willing to submit to authority, spiritual authority, especially especially the word of God. So one thing I loved about him was that he was very, um, very, I want to say flexible, but he was willing to change based yeah. off the word of God or based off of like if his pastors brought correction or if he just was convicted by the Holy Spirit and was just like, that happened a lot. <laughs> he would just be like, oh, 
I don't think we should do X, Y, and Z. The Holy Spirit is telling me we shouldn't do that anymore. You know, I apologize for this. But, you know, he was so willing to move and change in accordance to how the Holy Spirit led him. Um, And I knew that when we had that session about roles and submission and stuff and counseling, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) (laughs) I knew because of that, that I could submit to him and his authority. He was submitted to God and the authority of God. And I could trust God on the inside of him. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I do have one more question because I mean, I can keep asking questions on and on. That stuff always pop up in my mind. But uh, this would be my last question. And and I know that you weren't, and this is not based on experience. This is just. Mm -hmm. um, you can answer out of the word of God and out of out of your knowledge and wisdom of working with others in this sense um, for um, those that either um, just became born again, that just received salvation or um, they already received salvation some previous time back and they're in a sexual relationship. But now they're ready to back off. Mm-hmm. How do they um, or what are some of your suggestions with that, you know, um, backing off and pausing things, you know, or, you know, really to work on the relationship, if there's going to be a relationship, what, what do you typically tell, um, you know, your, um, you have, I know you deal with a lot of college age and man, when they graduate from college, they still come to you Mm -hmm. and how, how do you guide them and direct them? What are some of your words? Yeah. So you said if they're trying to kind of get out of the, or in the, physical part of relation of a dating relationship. Okay. Yeah. Um it helps if the two are in agreement, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah. but if not if you feel the conviction and the other person does not, then you need to stick with that conviction. But it does help if um it helps the relationship if you're both in agreement with it and have the same conviction. There will be a lot of tension <laughs> if yeah. you're trying to, but He's not or vice versa. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think at that point, you would want to assess the relationship, period, if you can't be in agreement on that piece, you know. But um, I think if you're making that decision now, you like, for, say, for example, you just realize, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. That's OK. You know, we, we're always responsible for the word that we know. And now that you know, you're responsible. <laughs> you're responsible when you have to respond and um, you can turn over a new leaf. You can repent and ask for forgiveness and um, turn over a new leaf of, um, you know, purity before God. Yeah. And you can set some things in place. You have to communicate that with the person you're in relationship with. Hopefully you all will be in agreement. You have to set some good boundaries. Um, you know, definitely not the Bible study, even though it sounds very super duper religious and amazing, not the Bible study at 10 o'clock at night at his house on the couch. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, set that's the that's and then the last thing I would recommend is having accountability, an accountability partner or just like a prayer partner um, yeah. who can really help you that you need to tell, like, you know, a good girlfriend, um, girl, yeah, so we decided that we're not going to do this anymore, but we need help. And mm-hmm. that person can help you check in, you know, like, hey, you going to his house this weekend? Okay, you're not staying in his room. You know, she can help you stay, <laughs> stay on point with that thing that you've communicated that you really want to move forward in. Um, but you have to be to be honest with them and um, to listen. They're like, mm, don't do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me and you go out. You know, you don't go over to his house right now. Right. Um, you have to be willing to let them to help you. Right. Right. Well, I'm going to end off on that note. Um, I would like to thank everybody for joining us. Um, we enjoyed your questions. We enjoyed your chat. I hope you enjoyed this discussion, this little chat here. Um, I tried out um, what's this stream something stream yard for the first time. I hope it worked out. And you know, if we did good, I'll try it out again next week. Uh, so, Nikia, can you pray us out as we um, as we end the, our broadcast? Sure. God, I just thank you so much for this evening, Lord. I thank you for. Um, Pastor Will and Pastor Ab and they're just heart for um, people and for healthy relationships. God, I thank you for everyone that was on tonight, Lord. I thank you that your spirit would just continue to speak to each and every person at the place that they're at, Father. I thank you for a rediscovery in you on tonight, Lord, whether it's a rediscovery in intimacy with you or rediscovering um, how it is that you want them to proceed in dating relationships. Lord, I just pray that 
blinders will fall off and that eyes will be open to you in a new way tonight, God. And we thank you for your spirit that just teaches us all things. And so God, I pray you will continue to teach uh, my brothers and sisters and lead them to all knowledge and understanding in you and your word, Father. Thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all for joining us and you all have a good night. Night.